In this video course, we're going to learn how to create a section perspective in Rhino. You can use any version of Rhino to create the section perspective. And the beauty of a section perspective is that the section cut itself is to scale and the rest of the drawing is in perspective. So you get to read a lot of spatial information and detailed information at the same time. Uh, so let's just go ahead and get started. It should not take a long whatsoever. Uh, let me just go ahead and delete this uh, clipping plane and start from scratch. And then let me just switch to shaded view because it's faster. Okay, great. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a clipping plane and I'm gonna make it vertical, okay? And start of edge, you wanna pick wherever you wanna cut on your design, you know? So maybe I'll just start here, I'll go across and I'll go up. Great. And so you don't have to make your clipping planes that large. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a plane that is aligned to your clipping plane. So I'll do a plane and I'll again select a vertical option and I'll snap to the ends of these clipping planes right here and I'll just go straight up. Great. Now the next step that we're going to do is we're going to create, a, we're going to do a command. It's called orient camera to surface, which makes the camera aligned to your clipping plane and the plane we just made. So if I do orient camera to surface, it'll say select surface to orient camera. So I want to click right here, right? Anywhere, anywhere in the surface. And you want, you want this arrow, you see, the, you see this little arrow? You want it to be pointing at you. You don't want it pointing in the other direction because then that means you're looking at the back of the camera. What this is, what this is saying is that you're looking at the front of the camera when this uh, arrow is pointing at you. So if I click on this, boom. So now we are perfectly aligned to the clipping plane. So anything that's cut on the clipping plane is perfectly straight. This is a really important step. You need to listen to this. This is super important. Do not orbit. Okay, you can pan, you can zoom, but do not orbit. So what I like to do is I like to just save my view immediately after I do this command. And you know, I'll just call it whatever, like SP section perspective uh, nine. Okay, great. So now I have this. So if I accidentally orbit, right, I can just type in SP nine and I'll go back. You see, and then obviously you don't want your section perspective to look like this. You can, you know, hold, if you're on a, on a window, you can hold control and the right mouse click and zoom out like this. You're still perfectly flat. Like this is, you're still perfectly aligned. If I do this, that does not matter. You're not, you're not destroying the uh, scale of the section cut because that's perfectly aligned. If you pan, that's fine. Right. So if you maybe you want your section perspective to be more biased to the top. Right. So you're seeing more of the top condition of your design or you want it more biased to the bottom. You want to see what's going on underneath or to the left, you know, or to the right. It doesn't matter as long as you just do not orbit. OK, so what I like to do is, you know, if you want to be dead center, you can do that. And you can like move your clipping plane here if you wanted to. It doesn't really matter. Uh, just what matters is you're aligned to your surface and that you do not orbit after you save your view. So I'll go back again and I'll just save my view again, right? I'll just save over the view. So, so yes, I'll save over it. And then, you know, if I accidentally orbit or something like that, I just type it in and I'll go right back to it. And even if my clipping plane is turned off, if I type my view, it'll reactivate the clipping plane for me, right? So for example, if I go here, I go to properties and I turn this off, right? You see, it's off. But if I type in my view, It'll take me right back to it and it'll reactivate it for me. All right, great. So this is to scale, all right? And you're basically done. You can either, you know, do, you know, go to rendered view if you wanted to and just do a view capture to file. You can make 2D if you wanted to. You know, you can do so much with this. It's so helpful. So like, I'll go to make 2D. Um, I'm probably going to fast forward through this video just because it'll take so long to finish. So let's do make 2D. Uh, save these settings. Definitely clip and plane intersections. A uh, viewport rectangle is great if you want to overlay things because then you can use the viewport rectangle, this right here, this rectangle here of your viewport, and uh, use it as like a reference if you overlay things like in Photoshop or in Illustrator. Uh, everything's fine. Tangent edges is optional. So I'll just go ahead and do OK, but for sure maintain source layers, and obviously you want to get the current view and do OK. So it finished Make 2D, and if I go to my top view over here, you see, this is the viewport rectangle, but you see now it's made 2D. And just to show that it has its actual scale, if I do dim, right? And if I do, let me get the dimension from here to here. That's two and a half feet. You see dimension from here to here, 11 and a half feet. And I'll, I'll measure it in real life just so that I can prove that this is pure section. I got to zoom in here because I think this is being cut. 
right here. One foot, you know, from here to here. Everything here is being cut. Uh, I got to pull it out. Mm, there we go. Two and a half feet. Great. From here to here. Some weird dimension because this is curving so it's going to be some weird dimension but you see all of these are, are true dimensions this is the true uh, height and length of these things you know and this looks super cool already in black and white uh so uh if i go back here right and i measure these things so let me just turn this off right so like for example if i measure this distance right Two and a half feet you see and then if i measure maybe the taper edge by the way i made videos about how to create this entire model so if you're curious you should definitely check those videos out it goes from super simple landform to uh also just spiral stairs how to create spiral stairs and then also how to create uh like you know the parametric structure that you saw in the section uh but let me just measure this one just so i can prove that it's actually to scale so i think this one was forget the number one foot, you see? So if you go back here, this is getting confusing, but you see this is one foot, one foot. I think this right here, thickness of the slab, two and a half feet. So this is the actual section cut itself is two scale and everything else is perspective. Again, if you wanna watch the other videos of how to create this, it's on there and I'll probably put links uh, on the video so you can watch them. Uh, but that's about it. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe just to help grow the channel. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, just leave them in the comment section below. Thank you.